Okay. Uh, so just for the recording, uh, I'm going to go over the um, Sinatra credit card challenge, which is right here, and we'll read through it uh, and go down it together. Um, but uh, first, I'm going to clone it. Cool. So I'm cloning on my desktop. I'm seeding into Sinatra. I'm going to open it in Sublime. Sublime here. Is that right? Nope. Ugh, that's uh, Okay, cool. So let's look at what we have just right away, right? Before we even start, what, what are we given immediately? Cool. We can ignore this GitHub folder. This was um, an old way that we were doing kind of feedback. So these are just uh, stuff for feedback. We don't need that. That's not going to help our, that's not doing anything for our app, okay? That was just a feedback thing. So first we have app RB. This is just the root of our app, right? This is where we're going to, this is the file that we're going to run that's going to start our um, Sinatra server and, uh, or start our server with, uh, and with our Sinatra routes. Um, and where we're going to put a lot of our logic. What's up, Ed? If you use any other file name, it won't work. No, it will work with any file name. App is just kind of um, a convention, right? So we could call whatever, as long as we run it with shotgun, whatever the file name is, it'll run. But that is a really good question because you're gonna see this come up a lot. Sometimes it's gonna be extremely important that you name a file a certain way, and then other times it's not. And it's kind of just, an, uh, um, you'll get used to it. You'll just get used to knowing what it is. So that's a good question. Um, config is, uh, I don't, we're not really doing much with that right now. We have our gem file, um, which we've seen before which is requiring Sinatra, which is just a gem, um, rake for our rake tasks, uh, and shotgun. Uh, the gem lock file is something that um, just holds the versions of everything. Um, and we don't, don't ever touch this, all right? This gets generated for you um, if it's not already there, and you don't have, there's no reason for you to mess with it, okay? So that's what the gem lock file is, and then our readme. So that's it, so we don't really have much here. Um, so let's take a look at what our goal is with this. Um, let's go down to release one. Okay, so open app.rb file and define a route for the app so that when a user visits localhost 9393, it renders a form allowing the user to put in a credit card number and submit the form. Don't define the HTML in your routes. Okay, so we're gonna use, basically all we're doing here is we wanna um, create a route that delivers a form. That's it. We just want to create a route that delivers a form. So let's do that. We'll go over here. We actually have a nice template here already. Okay. So we have Sinatra required, which gives us access to um, the get, the post, the, the get and the post routes. Um, so let's, uh, let's start our server and then we can kind of debug from there. So I'm gonna open a new tab just to do this. Uh, this is a habit I get into, you can do it any way you want. I'll usually have, because the server needs to kind of stay open. So I will have that running in a different tab uh, and then I can still move around my um, directories in the other tab or run any other like stuff I want. So uh, I'm in, I need to be in the directory with my app uh, file, which I am. So uh, I can run shotgun. We have shotgun installed, right? We have that in our gem file? Yeah. Yes, we have shotgun. Um, what, do I, what do I need to do to make sure all my gems are installed, by the way? Bundle you remember? What? Bundle insert install. You can just do bundle, I think. Um, cool. So I've made sure I've installed all my gems. I had them already, so it's just showing me what I'm using. Um, and now I can do shotgun app.rb. Great. Uh, what does shotgun do again? Who remembers why, we're, why we do shotgun and we don't just run Ruby? Refresh. Refresh, say more about that, Ed. Uh, to refresh without having to start the server. Yeah, so not with, with shotgun, shotgun list puts a listener on my file, right? And basically it's just checking um, or any updates to the file, any changes I make, and it automatically restarts the server for us, 
right? Or, or loads those um, changes in. Otherwise, when you start the server, just if we had just run Ruby app.rb, it would start a server, it would load our file in once, and it would not listen for those changes. So Shotgun is a tool that just helps us develop faster. Uh, okay, cool. So we're running our server. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, you can see, like, I have Puma going on, I think, because I, uh, a lot of you probably had WebBrick instead. Uh, it just depends on what you have installed. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, you, you will probably get Puma in the future. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure Rails uses Puma, so it will come with it. Um, but it doesn't matter, right? Whatever uh, you're using to run your server, the important thing is, is that we want to look for where it's listening. And right here, we're listening on port um, 9393. So this uh, 127.0.0.1 is always localhost, right? So we could type in this number, or we could just type in localhost. That's just shorthand for it. Um, and then the port we're on. So let's do that and see what we get. Localhost 9393. All right, and we have an error. Uh, syntax error, uh, Sinatra crud app, unexpected end. All right, let's see if we can figure out what this is. Does anybody see what's wrong here? It's actually very small, so. There's no do? Yep, absolutely. There's no do right here. So that was it. And that was kind of, we've seen Ruby errors similar to that before, right? Unexpected end of input. It usually means there's something wrong with the way, with our block, right? We're missing an end. In this case, we're missing a do. Ruby doesn't know where things start and stop. That's usually what that means, right? It's getting confused. So cool, we fixed that. Um, so now that this is fixed, and um, slash is our homepage, right? So that's just localhost 9393 is essentially what that is. Um, so what are we expecting when I refresh the page to appear? Hello world. Let's find out. Cool, and we have our hello world right here. Um, is there any confusion about what's going on here? How this is working? Feel pretty good, right? So we're, we have our server. Um, it, it was a little confusing to me at first because it's like we are, we are making a call to a server and usually I'm, I, for me, I was used to, you're used to that, that server being somewhere else, right? On a different computer, usually in a server farm, but that, right now the server is running on my computer, right? So I'm making a call to a server that's actually on my local machine. But the technology behind it is the same. I'm using the browser to make a get request. So anything I type up here is automatically a get request. And we saw this when we were doing jQuery, right? We were talking about get requests and post requests. Um, the browser will make a get request to this address, which is my local machine. Um, and uh, on my local machine, I'm running a program that accepts get requests to slash and uh, then runs whatever code I put in here. So any code I put in here will run. Cool. Um, okay, so we have hello world here, but that's not what we want. What do we really want to do? We want to render a form, right? And we don't want to render it directly. We could put a string of HTML in here and render that and that would work. Remember Ruby returns has implicit, uh, implicit return. So it will return um, whatever the last evaluated value is, right? So here it's just a string, which is why it gives it back. If I put a string of HTML in here, it will return that string of HTML. But that's a terrible way to start organizing our app because as our app gets bigger, we want to keep our, these are our, um, our controllers, right? Or our routes, we want to keep our routes small. So uh, Sinatra has built in the ability to make a views folder and fill it with all of your HTML and render that. So that's what we're going to do. New, oh, no, not a new file. My bad. New folder. We'll call it views. Uh, and this is a um, thing where the naming convention is important, right? Sinatra is specifically going to be looking for a file called views, and that's where it's going to go to look for your HTML. Right. Um, so in here, now in here, I can call it whatever I want because when I tell Sinatra to go get it, I'm going to give them a file name. Right. Uh, so I'm going to make a new file. Uh, I'm just going to call it form. Uh, and then what's our file extension when we're using Sinatra? 
ERB. ERB. Does anybody remember what that stands for? Embedded. Embedded Ruby, right? So it's an HTML file, or it's it allows us to write HTML with Ruby embedded in it. Uh, let's see. Let me save this. Cool. Uh, I have not memorized how to make an HTML form, so I'm going to look it up on the internet. And I'm pretty sure it's just a form tag, but rather than typing all that out, I'm going to steal this one and modify it. Cool. Cool. Here's my form. Uh, let's see. It doesn't look like I need any. I just need one input, right? Uh, and what am I asking for here? Credit card, right? Let's just say, please. Cool. Uh, okay, let's talk about this form a little bit because we're going to change a couple more things. Um, so my form tag wraps basically all my inputs, all of my, um, the, right now this one is, uh, this just has it kind of as text right here. But you might have also seen um, a label tag, which is a little bit better. It allows you a little bit more um, custom, to be a little bit more custom, customizable. You can have a label tag um, that um, connects to an input or something like that. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Then I have input. That's going to be where someone can input something. Uh, type text. I'm going to keep the same name. I'm going to change. Uh, what should I? What is this going to be? What are they going to input? Number. Let's just call it. Now, what is the significance of this name? Uh, you probably came across this. Some of you I, I know on Friday were getting a little bit frustrated because you were missing this attribute um, or um, there, we were unclear on how to use it. But what is the importance of having this name attribute on my input? Does anybody remember that? It, um... <clears throat> When you go and grab the information of the form, it sets whatever you have the name as, it sets that as the key. Yeah, absolutely. So the way uh, form works um, and the way the form in conjunction with the input works is whatever I enter into the input, I, I want that information sent to, to my server, right? I want that sent to my route because I'm going to do something with that info. Um, but I need some way to identify it, right? If I'm just getting a string of information with no identifiers, how do I parse through it? How do I understand what is what, right? You can imagine in a lengthier form too, where I'm getting several things. Like, I mean, think about anything you've ever signed up for, right? Your name, your, your first name, your last name, your email address. If that was all just running together, there'd be no way to differentiate it. So this allows us to get these key value pairs, right? that we've seen over and over and over again, just um, a way of organizing our data. So now what's gonna happen is when this form gets sent, I'm gonna get, a, uh, I'm not sure if it's technically exactly a hash, but it's very hash-like. And so I'm gonna get a hash-like object that is going to have a key, and the key will be anything I put in name. And in this case, it'll be credit card number. And then the value will be whatever was put in the input, right? Uh, we can get rid of this value. Well, all right. Um, let's, we'll come back and look at this in a minute. So, all right, so we have our form. Uh, we'll talk about the action in a minute, but we have our form. So now what I want to happen is, and what is not happening right now, uh, is when I go to localhost, I want that form to appear, right? So. Again, I'm making a call to a get, I'm making a get request to slash, and I need whatever is in here to be returned. So the way that I can access the views in my view folder is with a method that Sinatra gives us, right? And I, is it ERB? Is it just ERB? Can't remember now. Pretty sure it's just ERB. Anybody remember? Yeah, it's just ERB? Okay, good. Um, so ERB is a method, uh, and this confused me for a while too, because uh, something that I don't know if we talked about, Ruby allows you to call methods without parentheses, right? Uh, it's a stylistic thing. You're going to see it a lot more in Rails. For some reason, 
Rails community really kind of took hold of that style. Um, but then in other Ruby programs, you, sometimes people leave the parentheses on, right? But that was confusing to me because you probably saw this, ERB. And so ERB is this method that knows, okay, I'm gonna go look for an ERB file and I'm gonna go into a views folder to find it, right? That's why we need to name it views. Is it always views? It's always views, right? Um, you could probably go into the settings and reset it, but I don't know why you would, because views is what they are and it's just easier to keep track of that, right? Um, so it's gonna go into views and it's gonna look for a, uh, um, a file and we called our file form. So I pass it um, a symbol. This is just um, a Ruby way of identifying um, a value. Um, so we had like, we have variables. Um, this is something called a symbol. You can look it up. It's just like a unique identifier, essentially. Um, okay, so I'm passing it this so it knows where to go. Now just to reiterate my point, I can do this. I hope this should work. All right, and it will render my form. So I'm really just calling a method here, a built-in method. Uh, let's check this and see if it blows up or see if it works. Cool, it blew up. Uh, desktop, no file or directory. It's looking for a file called from. Ah, oh, thank you. Here we go. There we go. Cool. So here's our form. Please enter your credit card number um, and our input. Uh, we're missing a couple of things. One thing that I deleted that I didn't mean to. This. So uh, one problem we have is that there's no way to submit our form, right? Because I deleted the submit button on accident. So we just have our input, but I'm going to go back in here and throw that at the bottom. That should work. Um, cool. Uh, questions about the ERB? I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of it because convention just kind of leave these off. Good with that. Great. So now when we make our get request to slash. Um, Ruby runs this method, which looks in our views folder for this file and then that since that's the last thing evaluated it returns it right the contents of that file is this html so it returns this html so now we're going to come over here i'm going to refresh and i get my submit button so now i should be able to type in my credit card number which is i was playing with this yesterday uh and click submit and nothing happens so uh or not nothing happens we get an error right um these errors can be very helpful. You're gonna see to, in Rails, they're gonna be even more robust, right? But Sinatra has some pretty good ones. So Sinatra is saying it does not know what I'm asking it to do. And then it gives me this helpful thing right here. Try get to slash action page dot PHP do, uh, and then hello world just so I know it's working. And why is it giving me this? Let's go back and look at our HTML. Can we see it? Yes. What do you see, Michael? Um, our form. Mm -hmm. When it's submitted, the action for the form is submitted into the route action page. Yeah, absolutely. So I copied this off uh, W3 schools or whatever, and this was their deep, this is what they had in there, and I didn't change it. So when we submit a form, we need to tell the form where to go, right? Um, so just like when I go to my browser and in the, um, in the bar at the top, I type in the URL, I'm telling the browser where to make the get request, right? When I click submit on a form, that form has to know where do I make my get request or where do I make my post, right? Where do, where do I go? And that's this attribute right here, action, whoops, action right here. That's how we tell the form what to do. So, uh, let's go back and look at our, um, so let's see, so we did this first one, right? All we had to do was deliver our HTML form. That was release one. So release two, define a post route and change the form target from release one to match this route. So that submitting our form will hit our new route, create, a, um, and then we wanna create, let's see, a view that tells the user 
whether or not their credit card is valid. Cool, so we need a new route and a new view. So when I submit this form, I don't want it to go back to my get route, right? Because my get to slash renders the form and I'm just in a cycle now, right? I wanna perform a new action. So I'm gonna define a new route to do that. So the first thing I need to do is tell, um, tell this where to go. Actually, it doesn't matter what order you do this in, but anyway. Um, so I want it to go to, we can call this route whatever we want. We have um, uh, the ability to name our routes whatever we kind of need to. There's a convention to this that we're gonna get to a little bit more when we start talking about the CRUD, when John introduces the CRUD app. But for now, I'm just gonna call it what it is, right? Um, which is, what are we doing? We're credit check, I guess, right? So I'm gonna um, submit to a route called credit check. Now by default, the form, I believe, is gonna make a get request. We saw that uh, here, I think, right? It said try, this is, so this, this error is basically saying, we, we made a get request to this route and there was nothing there. So try creating a get to this route and it should work, right? Um, let's go back, refresh. Now if I submit, same thing, right? It's making a get to credit check now because I changed the action, but there's nothing there. But that's not what the release is asking us. The, re the release is actually asking us to make a post request. Does anybody remember the difference between the get and the post request? Why would we do a get over a post? James. I just read this, but I can't remember what it was. Give a guess. No worries. Get retrieves information. Yeah, get retrieves information. Post just get delivers. get that for me. Post does what? Delivers. delivers. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Um, post is when we want to change. Um, uh, it's when we, yeah, when we want to deliver and from we're kind of sending information. Usually, it's to change something in our database or update something in our database, uh, something like that, right? Um, so. Uh, get and post, you can send information with both, but when we send with a post, we get more options, we can send more data, um, and, uh, and then there's also just that convention of like knowing what to expect, right? We know when we send a get, we might send some information with our get, but we're not really looking to make a change to anything on the server, right? We're not really looking to do that. Um, with a post request, we're saying that's my intention. And then also just like bare um, uh, nuts and bolts, I'm given more options on how I want to do that. So that's why we want to practice that here. Um, so by default, our form makes a get request, but we can tell it to make a post request instead by adding another attribute called method, I believe. Uh, and then we can just put whatever method we want in here, we're going to put post. So now again, just to test that this is working, let me go back here fresh and if I click submit it did not work what did I, did I, one thing that is really helpful is learning how to spell but that is beyond the scope of this course is that method let's go back fresh yeah, there we go. Post, right? We have a post request. Cool. So now we know what to do. We need to define a post request to credit check and then tell it what to do. I'm just gonna copy this. An hell of it. I'll go back here. Copy this. And so now we're expecting hello world. Let's check and make sure that that works. Here, refresh. Cool. Um, so just to uh, one real quick go over what happened. First, we make a get request. Comes in here, and another thing just to keep in mind, um, Sinatra checks these routes in order, going from top to bottom, right? Um, and that'll come into play when we start doing CRUD. That'll come into play because we're actually going to have like you'll have a get to slash, you'll have like a get to slash users. You also have a post to slash users, and they'll do different things but they're gonna check in, we'll see as that goes. So just keep that in the back of your head. It's checking these in order. So 
It gets here, it knows it has a get to slash, it finds that immediately, it runs all this code, this code says return a form. It sends that back to the browser, the browser is happy. Um, you wanna keep in mind too, HTTP is stateless, so then as far as the server and the browser are concerned, they are done communicating. They do not remember anything about each other and it's over, right? Um, but we have this form now. This form is exactly what we wrote, it now exists in the browser, and the form has some important information in it. It knows that when it's submitted, it makes another um, request, a post, to a different route, right? So then when I click that, the request gets sent over to my server. Uh, it checks the get, that is not what it received. It checks the post, that is what it received, it returns this post, cool? Cool. So now we wanna do something here. And what do we want to do? We want to check the credit card information, right? We want to see if the information they send is valid. Um, I think it suggests sending uh, this fake method. Um, before we even get to this, one thing we haven't talked about is where is the information they sent, right? We sent them to the right route. I didn't really put anything in here. But I'm submitting this, and then where does it go? How do I get it? I need to get it so I can do something with it, right? How do I get it? Yeah. Absolutely. I can set a variable to param. Short answer, I get it from params. I get this thing for free called params, right? Gets sent with my post request, um, hash-like thing, um, and it gets set up uh, based on what I told the form to do, right? So when the form makes the post request, it also gathers all the data in it, puts it together in a nice little package for me, calls it params, and sends it, right? I can see this the way I debug a lot of things in Ruby, by just printing it out. So I can do p params, spelled that right, okay. Uh, so now I can see, I wanna come back over here too. We can see all the stuff that's been going on with our server here in this window, right? So you can see when it aired out, it printed the error. Um, when I made the request, here's the get, right? Here's the get request. Uh, let's see if it logged our, po here's our post requests that we were making, right? Um, so, let's see. yeah, here's the post request we were making that failed. Um, so here I can get access, I can see these params. So I'm just gonna print the params right here. Uh, and so let's go, I'm having a lot of trouble now. Let's go back here. Uh, and let's just, we'll just set the credit card to hello, I should probably refresh this, just to be sure. So, or here, we'll put this nonsensical number in here, cool. So I'm gonna submit, oh, and it returned params too, which is a mess, um, but let's go over here. Uh, okay, so here you can see params, right? I didn't name it anything, I didn't put any other identifier on it, but that's what this is. And it looks just like a Ruby hash, right? As these curly braces. Um, it has a string that is our key, and then here's the value, right? Um, so you, again, if we had a larger form, that had first name, last name, all this other stuff, then I would have a larger params hash with all of those values available to me. Then in my route, I can do whatever I want with this like any other hash, right? I can iterate through it, I can select key values um, at will, anything I want, right? Um, all I want is that one thing, which we called credit card. So um, I'm gonna grab it like I would grab anything else out of a hash. What, did I call credit card number? Credit card number. Cool. So now let's just return that and see what we get. So now, again, it's going to work similar to what we have up here. It's going to make the post request. It's going to grab credit card number out of Bram since that's the last thing we did. That's what it's going to return back to the browser. The browser is going to get it as a string and just throw it up. Cool.
So we should expect to see, there we go. Just returned it, right? Cool. All right, um, questions so far? Is this making a little bit more sense this time around? So far, so good. So far, so good. That's what I want to hear. So far, so bad is, no. All right. Um, what is our next step? What do I need to do next? So I, now I can get my credit card number. So what is the whole point of what we're making here? What do I want to do? Validate it. Want to validate it, right? Um, and I'm going to need a method for that. So we can return, so we've learned, we're learning a couple of different things we can do in our routes. We can return a string. We can call into our views and return HTML. Um, we can grab some data that was sent to us. We can also run any method. Any method that our program has access to, we can run, right? Um, this question was getting asked before, uh, a lot last week and I just want to reiterate it. Normally you would not put your method down here. Our met we want to keep a separation of concerns. So we would have all our routes in one file um, and, uh, or actually all our routes for one resource. We'll, you'll see it grow uh, in our method somewhere else. But for now, I'm just going to put it at the bottom. Um, and I kind of like what they're doing here because I don't want to go into this whole thing. So we're just going to do this kind of fake method here. I'm just going to copy it for the sake of time. Um, so we have a method credit card valid. It takes in a credit card number. It actually doesn't do anything with it. It just randomly returns true or false, right? Um, so let's do that. So now we can do, uh, uh, so now I want to take this information and I want to call this method with it, right? Um, we could call the method right on params just for the sake of like clarity and because we might use this later. Uh, I'm going to just save it to a variable and then use that variable to call credit card valid, uh, and then I'm going to pass it C number. Cool. Um, so now we're grabbing the variable, we're passing it to this method that doesn't really do anything with it, but is going to return true or false, right? Uh, I actually don't think we're going to, we're not going to see true or false because these aren't strings and we have to send a string back, right? Um, it's not gonna, it's like when the browser gets it, it's not gonna understand Ruby's idea of true and false. Um, so just so that we see something appear on the page, I can use interpolation here. Uh, where does it go with Ruby? Let's go with this, right? Cool, does everybody understand what's going on here? Like why I'm wrapping this in the string? Uh, just so we need to send a string. If we don't send a string back, the browser is not, again, it's true and what's going to return true, and, true or false, Ruby's idea of true and false, or Ruby's version of true or false, which is not a string. It's its, it's, its own Ruby thing, and the browser is going to know what that is. So I can convert it to a string really quickly before I send it out. Now I Now we're getting closer to the functionality we want, right? I have my form so someone can enter their credit card number. When they click submit, they get a response. Is it valid or not, right? This is saying true, but it's just randomly happening. Another one would, might say false or true again, doesn't matter. Cool, questions? Okay, so there's one more thing that we wanna do here though. There's one more stage to this, uh, which is, sorry. Okay, use the algorithm. Oh, is that it? We have to start the algorithm. Okay, looks like it, right? The rest of it was just implementing the credit card valid, which we actually already did. If you remember, we did that um, when we were doing algorithms. So it was basically just running that. Um, and then returning it. Uh, I want to do one more thing here, though, just to um, illustrate another thing that we didn't get to, which is passing variables to our ERB files. Um, something I know John went over, but I wanted to kind of hit again. So what if, um, and this is 
for security reasons, probably a terrible idea, but let's just say I wanted to say, I wanted to return to them their credit card number and say is valid or is not valid, right? But I wanted to re-render that credit card number. So um, I have it right here, and what I want to do is pass it to my view so that when I render my view, it will have the credit card number in it. Cool? Um, let's save this to a variable as well. We'll just call it um, valid. Cool. So this is, that's a, this, actually I'm not sure if I have to do this or not, but it's definitely convention when we're passing a variable from our um, route to our view to use the at sign. I'm pretty sure it'll work without it. I'm not 100%, we can try it out, um, but I think it might just be a convention. Cool. Um, okay, so I have actually two variables here. And then the last thing I wanna do is render a new ERB file that I haven't created yet, and we'll just call it like, um, uh, is valid, right? And this is basically the HTML where I want to let the user know is what they did valid. Um, I don't have this view yet, so uh, let's see the error Sinatra gives us. Uh, it's important just to start getting used to and understanding these helpful errors we get. Uh, and I'm hoping it'll ask us. So you can see no such directory. It's looking for, it's going into the views and it's looking for something called isValid.erb, right? So it's telling us what to do next. It's an important thing to start looking for, okay? A lot of times it's gonna tell you um, these frameworks have helpful errors that are gonna tell you what you need to do next. So we need to make this isValid.erb. Cool. So now I have this is valid ERB. Now, um, when I render this ERB, uh, any variables that I have in my route are going to be available to me. Let's check. Actually, I can't remember if you have to pass the locals or not. Were you guys passing it as yeah, locals? You, have, you, have to pass the locals. you do? All right, I believe you, but just because I'm stubborn, I want to try it without it. Uh, let's do the number. Save that. Oh, and then what else do I have to do in here? Name HTML tags. I have what, what tags? HTML tags, since you don't have a layout. Oh, right. You're technically, you're absolutely right, um, but Chrome is smart enough to know. And so I'm going to be able to get away without it, I think, here. Um, yeah, that's what I was getting at. So Ed, you're, to you're totally right. Ideally, I would want the layout form, right, and then the HTML tags. But I'm going to be able to get away with it here. I think. Uh, my equal sign. What, um, what are these? Um, I've heard them called, like, ice cream cones. But they're essentially uh, um, the carrots with the per percent sign. What are they allowing me to do? What do they tell the ERB file? That, that you're about to see some Ruby code and that you should run it. Cool. Um, and it's important to understand. So what happened, what's gonna happen here is, uh, let's see if this works first, because uh, who was telling me that this isn't gonna work that I totally believe? Michael? I, I said it, but. No, I believe you. <laughs> it worked? It totally worked. You don't need to pass the locals every time. Um, that idea of passing locals, though, important to know because uh, I don't want to. I won't get into the technical, but we'll see it in the future. Um, needing to pass local variables around to different views and stuff that'll come up. Uh, this must have some default behavior that lets it work without it. Uh, okay, so um, what's happening here? When we make our post request uh, to this. Uh, route. We are, gra we are grabbing params, which we get for free. We're grabbing a specific variable out of there. I'm setting it to C number. Uh, we're running line 10, but we're not doing anything with it right now. Then I'm calling a method called ERB. I'm passing it a view to look for. ERB looks for that view. It also takes any variables in that block with it. Um, and then it goes into the view 
and we run this code before we send it, right? So before we send the view, we run any Ruby code that we need to, kind of package it all up and then send it out to the user, cool? So here it's just passing this one variable, um, which I just threw into an H1, uh, rendering it out and then sending it back to the user as whatever I typed in. Let's go back and just do, Oh, I didn't really put any restrictions on this, so we can send anything. Cool. Um, are there any questions about that? Pretty good. How many people finished the second one? One, finished it. Um, so I think if there aren't any other questions, um, let's take a look at it, but I want everyone to try it now. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how these things are working together. Um, and you can hit that second one. If you haven't started it yet, I would encourage you to, to start it before lunch um, and try to get it done today if you can, because John's gonna come in this afternoon and introduce some new stuff. Cool? All right, hold on, let me stop the, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna stop the video.